Over 4,000 years ago, an ancient Mesopotamian text described the first dragon recorded in human history, a great serpent named Usum Gal. This dragon was probably the original fire-breathing influencer. Since then, dragons have appeared in all cultures with different names and forms, small, medium, large, talking ones, city destroyers, and even those with donkey offspring. Looking at you, Shrek. It's like a dragon shop. We've got all sizes and models. Hop on your favorite because at Molecool, we're taking a trip to see these creatures up close and learn how they work. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel along the way. It's your travel insurance. We promise not to slay any dragons on this journey. Although they're mythological animals, Spoiler alert, they don't exist. Sorry to burst your bubble, Daenerys fans. Scientists always attentive to humanity's FAQs have pondered how these majestic animals could take flight. To fly, a dragon would need enormous wings relative to its size, like those of albatrosses. Some nerdy researchers think that the wingspan would have to be many times the dragon's length in order to achieve flight. Game of Thrones' largest dragon, Balerion, would measure over 150 meters long. That's nearly two football fields. But its wingspan is described as about 100 meters. Scientists say it should be more than double that, 300 meters. Goodbye to my plans of being the new Khaleesi. They don't fit in my garage. To flap those wings, the dragon would need colossal strength comparable to several jet engines running simultaneously. But the problem wouldn't just be the strength required, it would be the noise and powerful air currents generated. Every time our dragon wanted to take a spin, alarms would sound and people would flee to shelters. It would be like having a heavy metal concert and a twister at the same time. Now add the dragon's roar, hypothetically reaching 200 to 220 decibels, would be incredibly powerful far surpassing the loudest animal roars like the blue whale's 188 decibels. Such a roar could cause immediate physical harm, including eardrum rupture and lung damage, and have the potential to topple structures similar to a powerful explosion or minor earthquake. That gives another dimension to the phrase, my ears are bleeding. Additionally, this roar could theoretically be heard up to approximately 6,200 miles away. Under ideal conditions, a distance roughly equivalent to the distance between New York and Beijing. Imagine how dragons save in long-distance calls. The amount of energy needed to accomplish all this would be immense, so a dragon would have to eat nearly 10 tons of food to fly for just a few minutes. Run for your lives as they're carnivores. Scientists agree that its flight would be like that of birds. It would fill its air sacs and, through breathing, could stay afloat. It's basically like a giant scaly hot air balloon with teeth. Additionally, like birds, dragon bones would be hollow and it would require a very efficient respiratory system to maintain blood flow and dissipate the enormous heat generated by its movements. That's why its breath would be so hot it would look like fire. Wow, who knew that breathing fire was such a logical thing? We might think these are invented animals born from the minds of various writers throughout history. But paleontologists have found that millions of years ago, a very similar flying reptile inhabited the Earth, the Quetzalcoatlus. While not as large as those in GOT, scientists believe its wings reached 30 meters and it weighed one ton. It's like the prehistoric version of an airplane. But here comes the question we've all asked ourselves. Can a dragon carry me on its back? Well, mythological and fictional dragons surely can, but the Quetzalcoatlus would have a hard time as it would add almost 100 kilos to its weight. Try to convince your cat to give you a piggyback ride. It's the same. Not gonna happen. In nature, it has been seen that large birds can carry relatively heavy animals. For example, a golden eagle can carry prey of up to 10 kilos without a problem. This feathered fella ordered its food for pickup. The truth is that from a scientific point of view, dragons only belong to literature and the imagination of many authors. But some scientists believe that all this came about when ancient humans encountered dinosaur fossils and thought they were recent. Imagining the creatures that owned those bones. Picture this, a bunch of cavemen playing the world's oldest game of guess who. Despite our fervent wish for dragons to be real, for now, we must content ourselves with their distant evolutionary cousins. Similarly, when the cat distribution system gave you a stray cat when you really wanted a tiger. The Komodo dragon is the closest thing we've got. 
It's the largest lizard in the world, and although it doesn't fly, it has a very venomous bite and a forked tongue that makes it a very dangerous animal. But not as dangerous as a dragon. Take it as the diet version of a mythical dragon. And in the aerial department, we have the flying dragon or draco, which can't fly but have membranes on their ribs that allow them to glide between trees. Yes, just like Batman in his wingsuit. Dragons may belong to mythology and even literature, and although science has debunked their existence, we're sure that someday we can fulfill our dream of riding an animal that breathes fire and flies. Until then, we'll just have to make do with roller coasters and spicy food.